Like many of you, I have seen the recent report of a Model Y in Canada catching fire and the driver claiming he was trapped in the car and he ended up having to kick out this window to get in. What happened is still unknown exactly, but following whatever happened, whatever failure it was that shut the car down, he lost power in both the main battery pack and in the 12 volt backup. So he had no power to any of the doors or windows. Windows wouldn't go down, doors wouldn't open. And like many of you, that sounds awfully alarming and concerning. Now, before we rush to judgment and call this guy out for not opening the door in the way it's intended to in an emergency, it's okay. I mean, it's a new car. These things are still fresh for the public. So it's not uncommon to not really know what to do in an emergency. Beyond that, there have been claims that Tesla is a death trap. And today I wanna look at that and in a very level setted way, in a fair way, look and see just how safe or how much of a death trap these could be in case of an emergency where you lose all power and the car catches on fire. Now, before we dive into that, I do wanna say one thing very clearly and very quickly. Electric cars can catch fire just like any car out there. However, the number of electric car fires that there are are way, way less than in a gas car. You're literally driving around with a combustible liquid in your gas car. So keep that in mind. Electric cars are very, very safe. And the most common way for an electric vehicle to catch fire is in a severe accident. So a car to just spontaneously combust is very rare and does not happen at least normally. So for that to actually happen is so rare. And I don't want you to get the impression that electric cars are unsafe because of fires. And I hear it all the time and it drives me bonkers because the number of fires in electric cars is so, so small compared to the daily car fires that are caused by gas or diesel powered vehicles. So enough about that, let's dive into this because this is a really important topic. I have two young children and that makes the safety requirement that much higher in my mind. And following this video, I am going to be making some changes to my vehicle to make it just a little bit safer, a little bit more peace of mind. And I'll share that with you. I'm gonna look at the Model Y that we're sitting in right now. I'm also gonna look at our Model 3 because the rear emergency releases are different in this car as they are in the Model 3. The reason why that's important is because unless you have adults in the back of the car, and you have toddlers like us, trying to get them to understand how to open these rear doors is not so simple. So with that, let's dive into this. Of course, if you're in the front of the vehicle, this is the safest place to get out of this vehicle. It actually requires very little to no understanding of what to do. As a matter of fact, when people get in my car for the first time, they usually grab that emergency release and open the door the way it's supposed to be done in an emergency with no power. Of course, you probably know where these are, but just in case, right here in front of your windows, if you just pull up on this lever, it will automatically open and release the door. Now, Tesla did a software update probably about a year ago that as long as there is power, even if you grab that manual release, it will drop the window just a little bit. So back in the day, it used to just not interact with the window at all and basically it would rub on the trim of the car. Now in an emergency, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you gotta do. But now Tesla has, as long as there's power, when you pull that emergency release, it is going to lower the window a little bit to clear that trim to open up. But that's how you open the front doors in case of an emergency, no power. That's how you get out of the vehicle. Now on to the rear of this car, and this is where things get, in my opinion, there's room for improvement. I think that trying to put your mind in the perspective of a child, uh, whether they're really young or they're toddlers or even in that 10 year old range, there's more involved with opening these rear doors and in an emergency, if possible, it may be best to reach back there, rip the seat belts off, maybe even have a seat belt cutter to clearly cut those off quickly and pull them out through the front of the vehicle. That's probably going to be the fastest. Now do keep in mind also, in case of an emergency, these Teslas are supposed to automatically unlock all the doors. So from the outside of the vehicle, you should be able to open all the doors front and back. So no power, 
these back doors should be able to manually mechanically release from those outdoor handles. But let's just assume we're all in the car and we can't get those doors open. Let's take a look in the Model Y, what you have to do to get those doors open. Okay, so here in the back seat is where things start to get a little bit more questionable in my opinion, and some of you may agree or disagree. But unless you're an adult, this process is probably going to be tricky and it may be worth doing some training with your children so that way they know what to do without having to be told. Now, if your kids are my children's age, which is three and five, I'm not going to rely on this because this is probably not going to work. I'm going to pull them through the front of the car. But let's take a look. Even as an adult, I think that there's some room for improvement on the release for these rear doors. Okay, so on this rear door, there's not that emergency release lever right here like there is in the front. All right, so let's get on to problem number one. This release is underneath this rubber cover here, and this is pretty traditional, it makes it look nice, but that's all it does is it helps to make it look nice and to help stop liquids, whatever. Getting this out is not easy, and the reason is you can't really get behind it, but there is a little lever piece that's kind of built into it, but it's all the way back here. So let me see if you can see that at all. There's a little flap here that you're going to have to get to. So you can see this is not super easy when you're sitting in the car. But once you get that out, then you can pull this piece out. Put that to the side. Now here's the second issue. The emergency release is underneath this. And here's where the problem is. This, unless you have nails, probably going to struggle to get this open and keep in mind if there is an emergency this is not going to be a comfortable situ oh, not going to be a comfortable situation now i've already opened this once so it was a little bit easier to open so it may be worth at least just opening it just to get it a little bit loose for future use in my car i'm going to remove this altogether this is going away so that way we don't have to worry about that and you can just get to it now, once you open it, you'll see this little foam guy. Here's issue number three. If you have bigger fingers, it's kind of tricky to get this out because that hole's not very big, but there we go. So once you get a hold of this foam piece, you're gonna pull on it. And it does require a little bit of pulling, more than you would think. And that's how you get the door open. Now, of course, like I said, in an emergency, these doors are supposed to unlock automatically as it's powering down. So these should be able to open just like that if there is no power. All right, so here we are in the Model 3 and things are a little bit different. And I'll explain why here in a second. Of course, here in the front, the emergency release for these front two doors is the same exact release as it is for the Model Y. Right here in front of the windows is the same release. And again, because of the update, the window will go down when there is power. Now when there's not, again, that window won't move, obviously, and it will rub against your trim. But don't worry about that if you're in a real emergency. The point is, you don't have to kick out the windows. You don't have to freak out. Just take a deep breath, stay as calm as you can, and grab that emergency release. Now, here's where things get different uh, in the Model 3, and I'm not sure how I feel about this. I didn't realize this until just this moment. Now, in my car, I don't have those tabs. I also don't have any buttons hidden under a little cover on these back doors. I pulled up the owner's manual and as it turns out, only the front doors are equipped with manual door releases. So these rear doors, they don't have an emergency release from the inside of the car. So if you lose all power, these doors will not open from the inside. Now again, these cars are designed that if a fault happens like this, the doors are supposed to automatically unlock during that situation so that you can open them from the outside. Assuming everything goes to plan, that's how you get people out of the back. However, in this car, your best bet is to open this door here on the driver's side, reach around and grab your children. So that's how you're gonna get out of a Model 3. And this Model 3, is definitely gonna score lower than the Model Y. All right, so let's wrap things up here just as a full recap. In the Model Y and the Model 3 in the front, it's the same release. 
nothing to really worry about in the front of this car. You can get out of these doors easily without having to do anything too drastic. The back seat of the Model Y, it's 50-50. I'm not too convinced that those releases are going to be easily accessible in case of an emergency because you're probably going to be freaking out, especially if it's a passenger in the back. They're going to be freaking out. And if you have little kids like us, they're not going to be able to get to that. So again, reach back there, grab your children and take them out the front with you. Same for adult passengers. Have them climb through. Don't even mess with those rear doors. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to remove that little piece of rubber that's covering everything. I'm going to leave that door open so that way nobody has to fumble around to find that. I'm just going to leave it like that just for safety's sake. Now on the Model 3, I'm really disappointed actually. So on top of those changes I'm going to be doing to these back two doors, I'm also going to be getting a seatbelt cutter and I'm going to put it somewhere that's easy to get to, share it with my wife, let her know where it's at so we both know very easily how to get those seat belts just cut them and pull our children out through these front doors in the unlikely event of an emergency. I'm actually glad I did this video because even I learned something today and I hope that you did too. This car is not a death trap. There are mechanical releases in case of an emergency. Yes, other cars may be easier to get out of all four doors, but if you have the child locks on like we do, those back doors are gonna be locked anyway, so you're gonna have to figure out how to get them out and it's likely going to be go out your door, go around to the back and open it, just like you would in this car. So a lot of this just comes down to basic education of the car in the event of an emergency. I hope that this was eye-opening for you and no, I would not call this a death trap and do keep in mind the likelihood of a catastrophic event in this car is much, much less than it is in a traditional gasoline powered vehicle. But in the case of an emergency, now you kind of have an idea of what you need to do to get out of this car. Don't worry about kicking out the window, try to stay as calm as you can and use this mechanical release here on these front two doors. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.